Hey dudes, Riven of Ash here. You want to see some OP weapon invasions in 3R1 destruction? Well, then you came to the wrong place. Today we will be playing with the Rifle Spear, aka Stake Driver on a Stick. This one has one of the less flexible movesets in the game. The untransformed attacks are pokes, the transformed attacks are slower, the R1s look awkward as all hell and have less range than the untransformed ones. The transformed L2 is a blunderbuss shot that adds little to, you know, a blunderbuss shot. The transformed attacks are nothing to write home about. One is a kind of swipe and the other one is, well, a blunderbuss shot. Amidst of all this mediocrity there is one great attack. Do you remember the NPC on Yargle Chapel? Well, this guy does. And that charged R2 is the only thing that makes this weapon worth using. It has a huge damage multiplier that in the right situations can one-shot your opponent. It has a very large and deceptive range. This makes for a fun weapon to use in invasions. Not because it's good, spoilers it's not, but because it falls on the player to create the situations where it can be strong. Let's go do some invading. Now, one of the things I, I like doing in the Soulsborne franchise when I'm invading um, is playing with different weapons, because playing with different weapons changes my playstyle. There's a lot of dudes that always play the same way, um, irrespective of the weapon they're using. Um, I myself like to do the opposite. I like to uh, change a lot my playstyle depending of the setup I'm using. I think that makes the games fresh for me. So I've already seen these guys and I, I have my back turned to them because I want them to think that I'm not aware of their presence. And <laughs> when they're at the, the correct distance I charge the R2 uh, which has uh, amazing hyper armor <laughs> and one of them gets one shot and the other one um, gets very hurt, uh, he's barely uh, hanging by a thread. And I do this out of necessity because this weapon does very low damage except for that charge R2. So um, this is the most effective way of, of playing with this one uh, in my opinion. And I had a lot of fun in these invasions creating the, the correct timings in order for me to, to strike. Uh, in this invasion it was the opposite. I, I faced these guys, uh, these two guys, on a neutral situation and I have some cool stuff to show you. Um, uh, this one right here is something that you can also do on Dark Souls 3. Um, <laughs> well, except for the burrito. Uh, the idea here is to go for Nar 1, uh, then I know that he probably is gonna swing again. Uh, I do a restart parry uh, with the blunderbuss and then I go for the burrito. Uh, in Dark Souls 3 you can also do that a lot. You go for an R1, uh, they keep spamming their R1 button, you parry them with your with your parry tool and, and then you can uh, repost them. So against this dude, uh, this dude is spacing relatively well so I know that I'm gonna go for the charge with R2 and no one expects the, the range of the charge to be this big um, and do this much damage, so uh, an easy win. Now this invasion right here um, it's more about uh, strategic positioning uh, it's more about positioning really than anything else. Um, so the good thing about the boomstick is that you can outrange most of the attacks. Um, well, you cannot space on stairs because from software will never let let you um, outspace anyone on stairs. So I, I get hit by that charge there too from Ludwig. But anyway, this dude um, is spammy. The other guy is also relatively spammy, but they are being cautious and. And they, they are trying to flank me, here the, the, the host flanks me. And I'm trying to, to find an opening in their, in their formation because they are, they are sticking together. Uh, and here I didn't want to do uh, a jumping attack, um, they are never good uh, in Dark Souls 3 or in Bloodborne. At this point I see that uh, the NPC is coming up the stairs. Now this gives me a big strategic, strategic advantage, um, because they are not aware of the NPC yet. So I go to the other side of the room because if we if I hide behind the NPC they are gonna run away. 
But if the NPC is concealed, they will come after me. And I get their aggro, I go for an R1, and I try to avoid their attacks. And now they notice the NPC and the host runs away. Which leaves the Phantom uh, on a 2v1 situation. And now there's nothing the host can do. Uh, he's 2v1 against me and a powerful NPC. So this was a, an easy invasion just because of positioning. Now this one was one of those invasions where I had a plan and everything went wrong and, and then I had to deal with it. So this was a perfect situation for this weapon, uh, but I thought I was on the transform mode. So I went for a, a charged R2, uh, which was not the charge because the weapon was untransformed. And then I panicked into the transform attack, which is a blunderbuss shot, and now I have three very angry players chasing me. <laughs> so everything went wrong. But this gives me uh, the opportunity for another play. Um, <laughs> the dick in the box right there is a big mob. And so the visibility of, of my opponents is limited by, by the mob itself. And I, I take the opportunity to go for a, a charge R2, <laughs> which outright kills one of the phantoms and leaves the host very weak uh, and prone to be hit by the, by the mob. So this was one of those invasions that started badly, but ended up okay. Now this invasion is a, a 2v1 and uh, I wanted to show some more moves other than the, than the charged R2. So this dude was spamming, so he gets parried by the blunderbuss and he gets this roll. And now I have to, to play against the, against the host. And this is to show that while the charged R2 is a good attack, there's a lot to be desired. The tracking on it, on it is god awful. And uh, the R1s I'm doing 142 damage, which is not a lot by any means. Uh, and here I could have been parried. Uh, and this guy is, is just spamming his, his gun when I'm near him. And again, the, the tracking on this weapon all around, it's, it's really bad. Just look at this, the dude just needs to, to walk. But now I go for the transform attack, which is uh, kind of useless, but it can be useful in this, in this situation. So I go for the charge, I whiff the charge, but the transform attack can do like a, a 360 degree turn. And, and that's how I, I catch this dude. I, I use the the transform attack very seldomly because it, it's not useful in most combat scenarios, but it served me well in, in this one. <laughs> so because of how Bloodborne spawning works, um, you spawn in the place where you decide to invade, <laughs> I invade uh, into a three-man team. Um, and now I just run away to the mobs because uh, there's no way I'm gonna win a, a 3v1 fight uh, with this weapon from neutral. And I'm, 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 I'm waiting to see about what their next move will be. So I go for a blue elixir and I scout ahead. And this was one of the most frightening moments uh, in the Soulsborne franchise for me. Um, the dudes teleported. Uh, this was like a lag spike, so they were over there and then they were over here. Um, I, I, I kind of screamed when I, when I was recording this. Ah! <laughs> uh, th this was really weird. Now I, I scout ahead and I see that they are going the other way, but the host is alone. Um, and now I go for the charge R2 again. <laughs> but I whiff. <laughs> I laughed when this happened. I was not very amused, but I laughed anyway. <laughs> now I, I went for another one, and then I went for the plunge attack. So this weapon kind of is like a, a glass cannon weapon. When it hits, it does a lot of damage, but it's really hard to hit with it. It's kind of a stick driver on a stick. <laughs> now, this invasion was a, an interesting one. Uh, these two dudes decided to go mano a mano with, uh, with the gang squad here, and I'm just providing support. <laughs> and I get one of those weird backstabs because the dude was dead, but I thought I should do the visceral anyway, just to ensure that the guy was really dead. Um, and, and this uh, invasion shows that 
Uh, in fact, uh, the tracking of the, the spear is god-awful. The, the dude needs to really be on a straight line for you, uh, from you um, in order for you to, to, to be able to catch him, to hit him. <laughs> You'll see right here. Um, this, die, this guy doubles back and I go for the attack and I just overshoot him completely. So it's, it's really weird how bad the tracking on this one is. Now I'm just going for uh, roll catches like in Dark Souls 3. Um, the, the speed of this spear is similar to the ones in, in Dark Souls 3. And now this dude just uh, turns back to face me and he gets pancaked by the mob. So I thought that was hilarious. Uh, and so that's why I, I left this one in. Uh, this invasion right here uh, shows a little bit how I played with this weapon. Um, this guy was waving and I don't care because I'm not gonna fight you one-on-one -on, -one on a fair situation. So I just uh, go past him and then turn back with a... do a turn and burn with the charge R2. Uh, but this guy had a sliver of the, that magic pixel of health and, and now my plan went down the drain. Um, so I turn back, I, I go outside to see if I have any mob support and I'm waiting for them to, to come out uh, to see what I can do with the, with the mob and with the charged R2 because that's all you have to do with this weapon. <laughs> and I thought this situation was cool. I go for the charged R2 um, into a cannonball, into an R1 and I still manage to kill the, the host. I thought this one was fun as well. This invasion, uh, same drill. Um, I will never hit anyone out of neutral, uh, especially in a 2v1 scenario uh, with the spear, with the charged R2. Uh, and this dude is a password summoned uh, phantom, so I need to be careful with him. And I unlock and go for the charged R2, and I only do 614 damage. Uh, which probably has something to do with the, with the level of the cooperator. So I know that I won't be able to, to one-shot this dude like I would uh, most phantoms of my level. So this dude is using the Simon Bowblade um, and I get in and get a quick hit. But uh, the host at this time is not uh, intervening in the fight. I mean, he's, he's throwing some, some shots, but he's not ganking me per se. And because this dude was um, was spamming his R1s, I tried to go for a parry, I whiff, and he takes a good chunk of my health. And now I outspace the dude, uh, again, go for the charge R2, you can do this, because you can outspace most anything, almost anything with this, uh, with the charge R2. Uh, but now I'm, with, I'm running with very low stamina, and I'm not being able to punish the phantom accordingly and now he hits me with an R1 probably this was a uh, while in the dash and he takes like 60% of my life with the swing so now I know that I need to do something special in order to kill this dude this dude is not at 100% health so I just go for an R1 and now I know that he is within one shot range and so I manage to outspace him with the with the charged R2 and go for the for the one hit kill for about like 70% of his health. So I had to do some uh, quick thinking about how much health he had in order for me uh, to do charge R2 or else he would just uh, heal after I hit him. So this dude is also spamming. So I go for the, for the parry, I go for the burrito, and this guy has a good amount of health. So, so now I need to roll catch him out of um, his wake up and now I think that he's running on fumes so I just go for the for the blunderbuss shot that uh, that's innate to the weapon and I win this one well this is the build guys um, a soul level 59 build I have clockwise and anti-clockwise uh, runes all over um, 28 vitality, 21 endurance, 22 skill. I think this is exactly the same build as the one in the Burial Blade Invasions. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you, you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you next time. Raven out.